I always say to people, you know, if you're not doing what you think you should be doing, what are you doing instead? I think it's a really important question because, you know, we're making choices all the time. We're either, you know, we're either getting into the trade or not getting into the trade. We're either doing the, anal the analysis or we're not doing the analysis. What's up, traders? Welcome back to another trader interview as part of the DSR Trade Podcast. As a quick reminder, every single week I post a new interview like this with a trader around the world. If you don't want to miss them and if you want to be notified of future videos, click the subscribe button. It's going to be right here on the right hand side. That way you'll be notified of future videos that I post, trade interviews, tips, videos about trading and things that you need to know to be able to master trading. As I said before, my goal with these videos is to be able to teach you things that are on all the aspects of trading, on all different things like mindset, strategies and everything around. So that you're going to be a well-rounded trader, able to succeed and able to reach your goals in trading. So your subscription to this channel, which is totally free, is really appreciated, of course. This week for the interview, I talked with Steve Ward. I spoke with Steve Ward a few years back in 2017 for the first interview with him. And Steve is a trade psychologist that's really well known into the trading industry. He's been working with before sport athletes and now moved to trading several years back to help traders overcome the main difficulties of trading related to the mindset and psychology. Steve work has been recognized by a lot of people and he came to really talk about things that we talked about the first time but more in depth about discipline about having the right mindset, having the right attitudes, and things that you have to be able to work on to become a good trader. So if you're looking to take your trading to the next level, it's gonna be the perfect interview today for that. Let's dive right into the interview. Tip for people who don't know you now, tell people a little bit about who you are and just some background about yourself. Sure, so yeah, my name is Steve Ward and I'm a trade performance coach. I've been doing that now for 15 years. So started working with traders in 2005 uh, clients are typically people in hedge funds, banks, commodity trading houses, prop firms, and utility companies. Prior to that, spent a number of years working as a sports psychology coach. And uh, along that time, we've also been lucky enough to spend a bit of time working with professional poker players, which is obviously uh, pretty interesting and, and also quite similar to the, to the trading um, world. So, yeah, so, so my work, work really is, is, you know, very luckily travel the world, work with clients uh, from beginner traders, all the way through to market professionals, 25, 30 years plus, helping them really to develop the sort of the psychology and also the physiology of, of their trading. So uh, mind and body to support kind of the craft would be sort of the, the way I'd phrase it. Excellent. Very good. So we had an interview with it together, I think in 2016, I was trying to find out the exact date. Yeah. Actually, yeah, January 2016, exactly. So I'm curious to know what happens in your life since then. What's been going on? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think since we last spoke, which probably was maybe a year or two after the Trader Mind book had come out, which was kind of focused on uh, mindfulness uh, based approaches for traders. And so I, I guess a recent event was um, a new book came out that came out June this year, Bulletproof Trader, which is focused on kind of how to deal with the, the downside, with the challenges, the stresses and emotions of trading. And it kind of draws upon a bit of psychology, some physiology, but also a little bit of philosophy. So a bit of stoic philosophy in there as well. So that's quite a new event. Um, continued growth really of the business, working with more and more clients, uh, which, which has been great. And yeah, just, I guess, more learning from my side into kind of, you know, seeing lots more work in the, in the neuroscience field and in psychology about kind of decision making, risk and uncertainty. So, so continued learning for me. And um, yeah, I think that's really, and obviously this year, obviously, we've, I guess with, with COVID-19 coronavirus, that's been a, um, a big event as well and changed my, my approach to working with people, which has been quite interesting as well. So. I'll be honest, I haven't read that second book, but I'll definitely get to it after for sure. Uh, I think you stuff to be good before. Trader Man was really good for me, so I'll definitely get to it and have a look at it for sure. Yeah, cool. I know we mentioned the first interview about your story and how you became a, a trader psychologist, but I'm curious to hear about what are the similarities between trading and poker? What's similar, what's maybe different, and how do both people kind of have to work on things to become better? So I think the, the core similarity between trading and poker is essentially in, in both your making decisions and under conditions of uncertainty. So I think that's, that's why I think trading and poker are more aligned than trading and sports perhaps. And essentially you're making bets. So you, you're making a decision. You're obviously having to take risks. So you're, you're betting on that decision. The conditions are uncertain and obviously things unfold um, over time. There's uncertainty. There's a bit element of uncontrollability. There's also a bit of novelty. So I think the conditions are very similar and what it really means is in both you have to be or the, or the craft as such is really the risk taking the decision making um and, and then obviously as we know in trading you know the, the, how we manage the money so the money management side of things so i think that that's the crux of what is similar 
And then I think, you know, within both, it's the ability to um, have some kind of process or strategy. And it can be very different. As we know, in trading, you can have multiple ways of trading the markets. There's multiple ways that you can play poker. So there's a bit about having a strategy, um, a style, which also fits with you as a person, which I think is really important, that plays to your strengths. Um, and then the skill, obviously, is, is, is in trading the discipline terms is how do we execute that consistently over time so obviously in poker the variance is very high so you lose a lot of hands um, that can bring obviously emotions and stresses and strains such as obviously in trading where there's obviously also variance um, how do we deal with, with the losses the setbacks losing runs also importantly how do we deal with the winning um, so obviously in poker you can end up you know with, with, with a big pile of chips pretty quickly uh, in trading we can end up with big wins quite quickly so that can equally um, stress the system and, and kind of put us into quite an emotional um, high level state so so I think it's, I think yeah there's, a, there's a, a lot of similarities and I think in both there's the um, the ability to kind of keep playing the game as such ongoing and continuing to learn and get better so kind of the mastery of the craft i think is a real and certainly when i worked in poker and i see this in my best trading clients is once you get beyond the basics and learning the game i think the ones who play it for a long time and get really good there's a real joy um in you know trying to master the, the game itself um which I think, yeah, is, is, a, is a good kind of deeper motivation. Does that mean that a good poker player would, would automatically be a good trader? Or are there some things that they have to work on first? Yeah, I think there are some good poker players that have become good traders. And there are some good traders that have also become good, good poker players. But I don't think all good traders become good poker players and vice versa. So I think there are some uniquenesses. Uh, and different challenges around what the actual craft and the skill set is. But I think definitely the, you could probably take a, a trader and get them into poker and learn the game faster than if you took a complete beginner from, from another domain and likewise from poker into trading. So uh, I, I think it gives you an advantage uh, as a starting point. And then I think there's some uniqueness and nuances beyond that, which people may or may not you know, like or, 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 or kind of get to grips with personality wise, which, which would determine um, how well they did overall. You mentioned the mastery of trading and, and mastering the skill of trading. So how does that happen? What is the process people would have to go through to be able to master their skill of trading? So I think um, when we look at the, the path to learning trading, it's similar to learning anything. So the first stage really is about experimentation, trying lots of things out. Just really, you know, like we would do in sports, we might try lots of different sports out and we would find that we maybe have a preference for some or others our strengths, our weaknesses, what we enjoy, what we feel we can be good at. Um, and I think, you know, in trading, that, that should be the same. And that's maybe where I think, you know, for a lot of newer traders, maybe finding or spending more time just exploring and experimenting before you kind of hook into a, a certain market or a certain trading style is important. Then I think over time, there's the process of going from standardized to individualized. So maybe starting off, uh, we, we learn in a very formal way. Everyone learns the same way to get the basics. But recognizing that over time, we then need to find our own way of expressing um, our, our, our views and beliefs in the market. So that, that evolution is really important. Um, and I think you know, the, the, the third factor, which I think is, is, is crucial, really, or, or two things. One is recognizing that the goal is, is, is learning. So I think sometimes in trading, people come into it almost with a they want to make money that they come into it with an earning mindset too early and they forget that actually the early stages should be about learning and that, and that learning phase in professional trading when I've worked with on, on graduate training programs we're talking two to three years for people that are trading full time so they're in the, the office five days a week 50, 40, 50 weeks a year 10 to 12 hours a day plus work in the weekends and we would quite happily say to them you know it'd be two to three years before we expect you to really start to you know, get very competent and really get towards um, a high level of capability in this. So, but it is a learning focus and, and that means there's structured learning. There's a kind of progression um, of learning, uh, teaching, coaching, mentoring. I think all that adds huge value uh, to the learning process. So I think something structured, learning focused, experimentation, and then standardized to individualize. They're probably some of the core ingredients. Do you feel like people with different personalities learn trading a different way? Like some people are able to maybe practice more, do it more by themselves. Some people need more like a, like a hand to guide them through the process. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you know, like with all things, we are all individual. 
Uh, we all got our different ways of, of experiencing the world, of, of learning, uh, and also therefore our own ways of, of kind of, our, of, 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 of how we're going to end up trading the market. So there is a lot of variation and some people, yeah, absolutely will kind of find real joy in almost trying to solve the puzzle on their own. Other people will find more joy in maybe engaging with the community and being part of that. So everyone's going to find that their own way. Um, I think the one thing that probably all people do need though at some stages you need some feedback you know you need to be getting some feedback on how well you're doing are you on the right track um i think you can get almost so far on your own but i think there's a real value in also then being able to at some point in that journey connect with people who have either been there seen it done it or um can, can offer something that you can't see in yourself because obviously for all of us as individuals uh, we can only see things through our own eyes and sometimes you know to move to another level we need that outside feedback to kind of help us to move along a little bit so but yeah definitely it, it's going to be different for different people i remember the last time we spoke we discussed a few topics a few, a few things people had to master like the three skills people had to master i, th- I think we talk about uh, mindfulness we talk about dealing with discomfort and maybe something else what do you think are the are the main factors to becoming a good trader over the long term I think there's many. I mean, there's this trading skills to begin with. So the, one of the things you've got, to, you've got to get good at is actually just the, the craft of trading itself. So just, you know, the uh, understanding the markets, you know, you've got to kind of be able to analyze, uh, you've got to be able to kind of find opportunities, you've got to be able to manage your, your risk and your money. So there's this kind of the, the trading component piece, the craft piece, um, and then there's the mind and the body. And also it's the psychology and the physiology, which obviously is, is, is my domain. So I think it's really important to recognize that probably for newer traders, there's a bias towards mastering the craft. I think early on, you've really got to focus on getting the basic skills and the competencies in place. As you go further down the road of trading, I think then the bias becomes, once, you, once you've got a good level of competency in the craft, the role of the mind and the body play an increasingly important piece to the point where probably for the very best traders, it's probably the largest piece of the puzzle is, is probably what's going on in the mind and the body um, and how that enables you then to kind of maximize uh, the craft as such. Um, so, I mean, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of pieces. If we go to, on the mindset side, there's, I think there's a development of a mental framework. So, a, a mindset, how you think about yourself as a trader, how you think about the markets, how you think about risk, uncertainty, and winning and losing. So, there's the development ongoing of that. Um, inside that are probably some mental skills, like we've talked about. So, mindfulness, I would say that's a mental skill. So, the ability to have this present moment awareness, which I think is really important for a number of reasons, one of which is the ability to be able to notice and observe what's happening within you as it's happening, so we can have a chance to regulate it. Um, Being able to work with thoughts that show up. So sometimes if we're in trading, we get hooked by thoughts that might be unhelpful, needing a trade to win, an anxiety or a doubt about getting into the market. So being able to work with thoughts that show up. Likewise, I think, you know, managing emotions is, is a, a mental skill that needs to be developed and how we do that. So what we do with them when they show up is really important. Um, then I think there's a piece about, a big piece really, this goes into our, our previous chat about discomfort, which is about recognizing the need to be able to take action even though it's uncomfortable to take that action. You know, I think a lot of traders, um, their psychological challenges are because uncomfortable thoughts or emotions or sensations show up. And that's perfectly normal, but they read it as being not normal or as being negative or unhelpful. And they create aversions to those. So they kind of try to avoid them. And when we try to avoid the discomfort, we unfortunately often engage in trading behavior which reduces our profitability. So, you know, if we try to avoid a loss in the short term, that can feel quite good, but we might end up with bigger losses over time. If we don't take trades, then we might avoid losing on that trade, but we miss out on the profits of that trade and so on. So, you know, I think on the body side, I think how we manage the stress response is really important. So the physiological level uh, and how we look after ourselves in terms of just basic energy needs. So, you know, reducing the impact of fatigue. So sleeping well, eating well, um, moving uh, getting recovery and all these factors. I think there's a, it's, I think it's a big puzzle. Um, it is my short answer. There's a lot. It's a big jigsaw puzzle, and there's lots of pieces in it. And it's probably different for different people. Some things are the same. Some things are different based on what you're trading and how you're trading it. That was a big summary, though. That, that, that's quite insightful. Quite interesting. For sure. That there's more, but we just sort of, of have the time today to go into. All this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you mentioned the fact that people learn the craft of trading first, and then later on they go to psychology, physiology, and all these things on the side. 
Is there a way for people to learn the psychology and, and the, the physiology before they learn trading? Or do they have to go through the trading and then fail a little bit to be able to learn that properly after? I think you can, you can know it in advance. So when, when I started trading, um, I learned to trade um, because I was working with traders for the first time and it was completely new to me. So I wanted to understand the world, the language and, and so on. So when I started trading, I was fortunate that I spent quite a lot of time in sports psychology and I was beginning to really begin to get into and understand trading psychology. And I, and I genuinely believed having that knowledge helped me to learn faster uh, and to lose less. So definitely, I think it can be an advantage. But I think there's a difference between reading about the psychology of losing or um, about mindset or about emotions in trading when you've never traded compared to when you have traded. And when I used to do a lot of work on the graduate training programs and we used to teach trading psychology, almost without exception, people would say, Steve, I understand there's these mental mistakes people might make and there's, you know, there's all these biases, but look, I'm a smart guy. I'm not going to make those mistakes. There's almost a little bit of a, you know, people, it almost feels run your profits, cut your losses. How hard can it be? And I think at the early stages, it, it can feel a bit like that. Like we, we can kind of understand it conceptually. It's a bit like saying to a child, you know, um, don't touch um, the flame. We know what it's going to be like if they touch the flame. They don't know what it's going to be like. They've got, almost, they've got to touch the flame. And I think trading is the same. So I think you can understand the concept of, of it's hot, but I think you only realize it's hot when you touch it. So I think there's a, you can know the concepts and that's helpful in advance, but I think there's still an element where um, people need to actually be involved in the markets. And this is what I found for myself, you know, take some risk, have some wins, have some losses, really feel what it's like. And then I think you understand it more and you're probably more likely to do the work that's needed to then train it. Because it does, it takes a lot of work to train the mind and to train the body. The same as it takes a lot of work to train, you know, the craft and the skills and the knowledge and the strategy. And that's really key. So um, I, we evolved with our graduate programs where we would teach some psychology early on but we would do the majority of it kind of once they'd had some live market experience just because it was much more meaningful. People kind of got it. So it, but I think things around learning, you know, how to learn faster, some of the basics around you know, thinking in probabilities, just kind of knowing some of that stuff up front is helpful. And then I think once you get into it, you start to really understand why it's really important. What do you do with people that are afraid to move into trading more? Like people that... They've learned a little bit, but then they have to go to the next step. Like they have to go live or they have to go on a bigger size account. How do you help them to kind of take the next leap? Well, I think the key thing is, I mean, I think first of all, I say to them, it's probably it's normal. So I think, you know, for a lot of people, when we are taking the next step, whatever that step is, it's probably going to be uncomfortable to some degree. I mean, there might be some anxieties or worries or, or, or fears or stresses, which are perfectly normal to that situation. And I think this is one of the key factors in trading. I say to lots of people is, whatever the situation you're facing that's difficult is, you're not alone. There'll be many people having the same feelings in the same situation. So what's showing up is normal. And that normalization is really important. Then we've got to look at, at what is showing up that in some way is getting in your way of you taking the step you want to take. Is it a thought? Is it an emotion? Is that thought just in the moment? Is it tied to maybe memories from the past? You know, maybe you've tried it before and it didn't work and that memory is coming back in again. So kind of what, what's the interference that's kind of getting in the way? Uh, and we could do some work with that if we need to. Also, why is it important to take the next step? So let's kind of build a bit of commitment to kind of have some meaning to take the step. So let's commit to taking action. Let's work with what's showing up in terms of the thoughts and the feelings so we can kind of take those steps forward. But also, let's do look at the steps because for some people, maybe if you're going from a, a smaller account to a bigger account, um, the bigger account may just be too big. So what's the next size? And this is what I often do with trades when we're looking at you know, position sizing and, and risk is traders, and this is typically in prop trading, they'll start off with two lots, they go to four, they go to eight, they go to 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on. Now, for some people, that works really well. But for other people, 16 to 32 suddenly is huge. There's no reason why you've got to go from 16 lots to 32. You could go from 16 to 20 or 16 to 24 or 16 to 18. So, you know, finding the next step that's just a little bit uncomfortable, a bit of a stretch, but doesn't panic you is really important. Um, and then at some point, you know, if you're like going from, the, from simulator to live, sometimes it's like a parachute jump. 
and you're in a leap of faith. So you've got to commit. You do everything you can to be ready. It's never going to be comfortable and you have to do it anyway. And I think sometimes in trading, we do have to just recognize that we are in situ- I mean, even placing a trade, there's no guarantee. It is a parachute jump. You do everything you can to prepare to be ready to manage your risk, but there's no guarantee. So you still got to kind of take the action, even though it feels uneasy or uncomfortable, just like a parachute jump. Um, so you, you manage the risk as you do in parachuting, as you do in climbing. Um, but it's not that there's no risk and it's not that there's no discomfort. And I think sometimes people just need to kind of do all that you can. And then it is about, we just all have to realize that when we're doing this kind of risk and uncertainty work, it can feel challenging. That's how it is. It's okay. Let's do it anyway. Earlier today, I was talking with a, a prof firm owner, basically a guy who runs a prof firm. And he asked me a question, which I tried to answer a little bit. I kind of knew some parts of it, but I like to ask you the same thing. And the thing he asked me was, how do you help traders become profitable? Putting aside the, the trading aspect of like funding strategies, trading strategies, how do you help people, people become profitable traders? The, the, the goal to profitability is by developing competence. So you can't, you know, you're not going to be profitable if you're not good. You know, you, you're not going to be, you're not going to make money in football, soccer, uh, basketball, tennis, unless you're good at what you do. So for me, the whole goal of becoming profitable actually is, and this is where I think it's a money focus. I would say the goal is not to become profitable. The goal is actually to develop skill and knowledge and competence. If you develop the skill, the knowledge, the competence, then you're, you are likely to also to become profitable. And I think sometimes too much focus on becoming profitable, uh, prop firms and institutions have to have that focus because they are risking their money on these people essentially. So it, it is a business. But I think where you can, and this is what I would encourage in people is, the goal is to develop competence. The better you get at trading, the more likely you are to make money. But focusing on being profitable doesn't always lead you to take the behaviors that will actually make you profitable, if that makes sense. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a paradox. Uh, same as being, you know, if, you, if we're too focused on the outcome of our trading, we may actually uh, deviate away from the process that actually leads us to get good outcomes. But if we focus on the process of making good decisions, we tend to get the best outcomes. And I think that's really important. But so I think the goal is competency. Uh, when I was working uh, with the prop firms, we used to have a little model called the J curve, where basically it's, um, it's, it's like obviously it's a, just a J shape. And the bottom part of the J is kind of underneath the, the horizontal baseline. And we, we would try and say to people, we want that curve to be short and shallow. So ideally, we want you to become profitable as fast as we can and without going too deep down into your, into your reserves as such. Um, but again, how we did that was a real focus on craft, mind and body, competence, coaching, mentoring. All these things can accelerate people's learning curve, but it is very much a learning focus. And then we would almost say that, that the first phase is the learning phase. And then once you've kind of get good at the craft and the, and the mind and the body, then you can move into the earning phase. And now we're into how do we maximize the investment we've all put into your learning Whereas other people flip it around and they kind of, they try and do the, the earning first and it compromises the learning. Mm-hmm. That's a really good point. And actually a lot of time people that want to make money, but don't have the skills to match it up. They end up not making money or making it short term and losing it. And you're right in the sense that focusing on profit makes you have maybe bad habits so you can close your trades early because you want to have some profits and that's not going to work well long term for sure. I mean, I'm really big and it's, it's, sometimes it sounds a bit philosophical, but I think it's also very pragmatic that the goal of trading is to make good trading decisions. So, you know, I would, I would in, even in my very best clients, we talk a lot about decision making, what is a good decision, uh, what factors affect your decision making, both, both helpful and unhelpful. We talk a lot about um, becoming better at making decisions. So the goal actually of becoming a good trader is to become better at making decisions and taking risk under uncertainty. And the better you get at that, uh, the better you get at trading and then the better you probably end up in the overtime in terms of, you know, maximizing your market return. So uh, as you said, anybody in the short term could make money uh, just through luck and randomness. And that's also important that people recognize that, you know, the outcome of a trade is a combination of skill plus luck. And the, the skill piece is the trading process and the ability to execute the process. So that's the trading skill and that's what's controllable and that's what I really try and get into with my clients is, you know, let's look at the, the, the developing the skill piece, the process. 
Um, how will you execute the process? When is it good, not so good, strengths, weaknesses, and so on. All the things that we have control over, we can then use to kind of you know, improve skill, expertise, uh, and so on. Having built the skills to then going into maximizing your profit out of these skills. I talk about it a bit like um, building a tower block where there are some foundations and we could keep it simple, you know, uh, method, uh, mindset, money management, or, or any other kind of um, framework. But there's the foundational pieces that you need skill and knowledge wise, which if, you, if you've got those and they're good, you can then basically build a nice high tire block. If you don't have the foundations in place, then when you try to increase size and take more risk, essentially you're building a higher tower block, but on poor foundations. Now, there'll be times when that's not a problem at all, but when it gets a little bit windy or gusty or we get a few earth tremors in the markets, then suddenly it all comes crumbling down. So, so for me, I, you know, I, I often really encourage people to think about, and it, it's hard because it means it's a lot of hard work up front, but get the basics done really well early. And then actually scaling up in size is a lot easier. And I was actually doing a coaching session with a, with a client early today, going through a very similar process where we're looking at specific opportunities in the markets, it's trading them well so far. I've done a lot of work on putting the groundwork in, the basics, preparation, knowledge, and skill. And now the next step is now we can maximize those opportunities even more because the foundations are in place. And what it means is if you feel competent, then you're going to feel more confident and you're going to experience less anxiety and worry and fear. If your level of competence is low, it's going to be very hard to execute without anxiety and worry and fear and stress because you don't have the knowledge or skills you need in the first place. So this is why you know, the competence has such a big impact on traders' execution because that's what fills in the gap between you know, how much fear or anxiety you're experiencing is really a large factor of have you got competence or expertise in what you're doing? That's very true. I spent all the time who were scared of trading. They were afraid of losing. And it's just because they didn't build the skills enough to be able to get to the point where they feel okay with their decisions. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that, I mean, obviously some of my clients have been trading 25, 30 years. They also still get anxieties and they still get stresses and they still experience fear. That's because we're all traders, all trading the markets. And that's kind of part of the common experience that we all have. But it's the degree of that. Um, and I think, you know, the, 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 the challenge for newer traders is, is to realize that sometimes, and this is why when it comes to coaching, I'm always very wary, is that some traders' challenges, which they think are psychological, anxiety, fear, stress, are actually they're not a psychological challenge. That's what we're seeing on the surface. But the real challenge is they just maybe don't have a strategy that they trust or they don't have the skills or the knowledge to understand what's going on in the markets or, or to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. So uh, we have to be quite aware that you know, it's, when we're having a psychological challenge, is it actually psychological or, or is it a manifestation from, from somewhere else within the trading process? And I even had this recently with a, an experienced trader, um, used some models in his trading and has been experiencing a bit more anxiety and, and worry and stress than usual. And all it is, is the markets have changed. The models are not as effective under the new market conditions. What he's realized is he doesn't trust the models to be as reliable in the new market conditions. And the feedback to that emotionally is some kind of anxiety and worry. But that's kind of it. what's happening is it's the feedback of there's a shift and a change. It's not quite right. And, he's, and, and the emotional messengers are letting him know that. Through, through his feelings. Uh, but what's good is we've recognized that, now we can take action, and now he's refining and updating the models so they kind of fit more effectively into the current market conditions. So, so it can affect us all at different stages, and I think this is why it's really important to, when we're experiencing an emotion, just ask the question, why might I be feeling that? You know, where is it coming from? It's, it's really important. How do you build discipline? What it is regarding to taking the right trades or keeping the right habits or anything related to that? How do you keep discipline over time? Discipline is an interesting one, Etching. So, I mean, I think it's, it means different things to different people. Um, I think traditionally we would say, you know, it's have a plan, follow the plan. Some traders are more fluid than that. So some traders are kind of much more in the flow. So it's maybe on the outside, they don't look that disciplined, but they do have a framework. But I think, you know, discipline really begins with or or improving it begins with a clarity of what my process is. So it might be a very intuitive process, or it could be, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight pages of, of bullet points or diagrams. So, but there's some steps that people take that enable them to make money in the markets, and there's some kind of edge. So I think you, 
clarity of that, you need to know what that is to begin with is really important. Then I think if you are able to match your trading approach to, to your own personal strengths and who you are as a person, it makes discipline easier. So if you're trading in a way that's not aligned with your strengths and who you are as a person, then if essentially you're trying to be someone you're not. So you've got to work really hard. So that makes it hard to be disciplined because you're trying to be something that you're not. So I think in the early stages, it's kind of find a process, hopefully with some kind of edge, suits you as a person. That's the starting point. Within that process, preparation, research, evaluate, you know, uh, analysis, how do I get ready are, are some of the basics of, of, that, of that discipline. Execution, understanding about you know, when you're executing, what's helpful or, or not helpful for you is really important. It's kind of where's, where's the risk for you? Is it emotions that show up? Is it thoughts and so on? So knowing yourself, you know, kind of knowing where the, those crucial spots are, where you're likely to maybe make a bad decision and why, and then you know, doing the work to, to address those areas is really important. Um, evaluation, analysis, I think is a really key part of, of kind of overall discipline. So kind of uh, reflection. Again, for some people, it's five minutes a day. For other people, it's an hour at the weekend. But, you know, I think having some reflective process um, is really key. But I think discipline, there's kind of the, the trading part. Then there's also at the personal level, you know, if, you're, if your life's really busy and you're trying to do everything in the markets as well, um, you might just be tired and fatigued. Or, or stress because life is busy. So then it's hard to be disciplined. So, you know, kind of create an environment that allows you to have the energy and the focus to also be disciplined is very important as well. So it's, uh, and, and some people by nature are much more disciplined than others. So kind of, again, this is where building it into your trading framework is really important. So that's good to mention because I know plenty of people that think they're not disciplined, but it's just that they don't have the right conditions to be disciplined. Like they don't have the right amount of sleep or, or the right environment. And that makes them to think that they're not disciplined, but in fact, they're just not in the right environment. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a tricky one, discipline, because it, there's a number of factors involved, which is you've got to have the motivation to do what needs to be done. I always say to people, you know, if you're not doing what you think you should be doing, what are you doing instead? I think it's a really important question because, you know, we're, all, we're making choices all the time. We're either, you know, we're either getting into the trade or not getting into the trade. We're either doing the, anal the analysis or we're not doing the analysis. But if I'm not doing my analysis... What am I doing with my time instead? Because that might just reflect that actually there's other things in life that are also really important. And if I'm trying to fit trading into my life, then it's a balancing of all the things that are important to me that I've got to try and manage. And I've only got limited time and I've only got limited energy. So how do I balance that all out into an effective way, uh, which is really important? I think, you know, just energy is key to discipline. You know, if people are fatigued, the research is pretty clear that, you know, when we're tired and fatigued, um, we don't have the same level of self-control as we would normally have. Um, self-control is a high order um, brain function and it requires energy. And when we're low in energy, we just don't have the capacity to manage ourselves as well. So we're much more likely to, you know, not put the effort uh, all the time or have the ability to restrain ourselves. So uh, at the basic level, probably physiologically, you know, being energized or not being too fatigued or too stressed is critical for being disciplined. And then maybe, you know, sense of purpose, goals, you know, those things can kind of get a little bit of extra commitment. And I think, you know, also thinking about, you know, why you're doing, why it's important, uh, who you want to be, you know, the values um, can be good ways to kind of leverage commitment such that discipline is, is for me, it's, it's easy when we're energized and it's easy when we're motivated and it's easy when we are confident and when we're happy but we're not like that all the time so it's what can we tap into that enables us to take action even when it's difficult to do that you know maybe we're tired or we're, we're feeling you know we're, we're a bit stressed or we're a bit anxious but we're going to do it anyway and i think that's where you know the, the purpose and the values and the mission maybe that deeper level part of the mental framework becomes really important what are some of the habits you think most traders should have to be able to perform at their best Again, everyone's going to be different. Uh, even, you know, when I'm working with clients, we try and define individually what, what performing at your best even means, what that looks like for the individual. And that will determine to a degree then obviously what those habits are. But I think, you know, some of the basic ones are there needs to be some way of preparing uh, and preparation would have a, a technical, tactical component to it as well as a, a mentally emotional component. So how do I kind of get ready at the market level, but also at the me level? Uh, so I'm ready. Then I think, you know, an evaluation or analysis, that should be a key habit. Again, in some form, 
traders have, again, that suits them and, and their style. I'm, as you know, a big fan of things like mindfulness type practices. I think that kind of um, awareness practice is really key. And that could be anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes a day, depending on the individual or, or more. But I think you know, there's a lot to be gained from that. Uh, more recently, I've done quite a lot of work with clients around kind of breathwork type practices. So that, again, could be a, a similar or alternative practice to do a journal that maybe isn't part of the normal trading reflection, but maybe it's just a chance to, you know, get thoughts and feelings down and, 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 and to look at um, is helpful for a lot of people in, in, in some way um, as well. Then I think, you know, just things like um, having a daily or weekly or even monthly, but uh, a focus for learning something, like a learning focus, something to work on. So when I was working with the newer traders, I'd often walk around the trading floor and just ask, you know, what are you working on right now? And sometimes they'd just be going, well, I'm just, I'm just trading, trying to make money. I'm going, yeah, I understand that. But alongside that, what are you working on? How are you trying to become a better trader? So I think, you know, it's a really good practice. And I try and encourage it in, in lots of my clients is to think about, you know, over the course of it could be the quarter, to the month or the week, you know, what's, what's something you could do to become a better trader? And then how can you action that each day? And that, that's a really good habit. I, I love the idea of kind of this ongoing development and we're always working to be better. And as markets evolve and, and change, as you know, uh, we need to keep updating ourselves. So, so, so it's actually critical. We made a, a, like a big poster of about 100 different exercises which were developmental, you know, watch a podcast, uh, read an article, speak to an experienced trader, and so on. And then we said to them, you, know, you should be doing one thing from your list every day. And some tasks might take a minute and some might take an hour. But every day, try and do something from that list so you feel that in some way you're becoming a better trader in, in a kind of a, a proactive way. Do you feel like meditation or breath work, is there a best time of the day to do it? Or you can do it pretty much any time in the evening or in the morning or whatever and it doesn't make a difference? I think the best time... Well, the answer I would, I would give is the time when you can be most consistent with it. Because I think the challenge for people is the consistency of the practice. You know, you'll get the gains, breath work, meditation, exercise, whatever it is. The gains come through consistency. And so it's finding the time of day when you're going to be most consistent, which for some people might be first thing in the morning others lunchtime, some it could be in the evening. I've not seen any research that shows specifically a, a better and or worse time. There might be some um, better or worse times based on the effect that you were trying to get. Uh, but for me, consistency is the key. Now, that's the challenge for most people when they take on meditation, mindfulness, breath work, whatever it is, is doing it regularly. So I think that's the biggest barrier. Let's make it as easy as possible to overcome that barrier and get the consistency first. And, and again, even time frame, you know, start small, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, build up over time, make it easy to get into it, build the habit, and then you can always extend beyond that. That's good. I've tried meditation like a few different times and what seems for me was like mostly afternoon, but I also see a benefit of doing it before starting to trade in the morning. That's why I was not sure about it, but I think both times work really well, so... And again, like we were saying before with learning, it's good. For me, this is all about self-experimentation. So it's good to try different times of the day, different lengths, different types of meditation, try lots of things out, and then you'll start to find out what works. And it, um, I think, you know, sometimes we, we're almost looking for the answer too quickly. And I think, you know, we, we miss out on the joy, but also the value in, in the experimenting and the testing and the trying and the narrowing down. And, and, and when, when we look at behavior change, uh, which is what performance improvement really is, I always frame that around self-experimentation. You know, we're going to do an experiment. Let's, let's test it. We've got an idea. If we try this behavior, it might impact your trading in this way. Okay, great. That's our hypothesis. Let's design an experiment. Let's test it. We'll get some feedback. We we'll see how it goes. And, you know, then we'll adapt it or refine it if we need to. But it's all about this kind of, I guess, a bit of um, bit of playfulness, you know, not, not getting too hooked into we've got to solve it right away in a certain way, but being open to different possibilities. Definitely. It's super important. So you're working on a new course right now that you're going to be launching soon, actually a live training. So I want to give you some time to tell people what, what it's about and who it's for and how it can help people to be able to get better at trading. It, it's a new course. It's launching um, October this year, so 2020. And it's it's different because it's the first time I've run a course for non-institutional um, uh, professional traders for, for many, many, many years. And it's come really because every year I get asked by 
um, individuals for coaching or by, or by groups for, for pr- pr- programs, training programs. And I just don't really have the time to do it. And also this year has been a bit different with, with COVID-19 and coronavirus. So uh, I've been at home a lot more. So, um, and in fact, actually the demand has been higher. So yeah, so we're going to launch the course. And the goal really is to help people to obviously develop the trading psychology specifically. So it's kind of uh, mental framework and mental skills. That's going to be the main focus. Uh, seven sessions of about an hour and then some, some Q&A uh, beyond that as well, um, all, all delivered live via, via webinar. And that will roll over about a six-week period. Then we'll have a pause for about a month. And then we'll have about four weeks later, we're going to have like a little Q&A catch-up, check in on progress and, and share some successes and so on. So, so in total, eight sessions. Um, and, and, and from my side, really, what I wanted to offer people was a chance to work on a very sort of mindset-specific program, a chance for me to share some of the, the knowledge and the, the insights that I've been lucky to gain from working with some phenomenal traders from, from all over the world, different institutions, and, and to share with the people who come on the course just some of the, the techniques and the approaches that I use with those clients so they can try them out for themselves as well. And then between the sessions, we're going to have some you know, follow-up activities, there'd be a journal, some, some workbook and exercises. So we try and make it pretty immersive. I think in the Q&A sessions, I was really keen to do the Q&A session so that people can have a chance to ask questions. Obviously, we can't do one-to-one coaching because it's going to be in a group, but people can ask questions. Hopefully, I can try and give some advice or guidance in real time, a bit like we're doing now you know, in, in, in this podcast. And yeah, do something a little bit different for people. So that, that, that's the goal. So yeah, and then I say it will, it will run uh, mid of October through to end of November. And then the, the, the Q&A session will be at the end or probably, probably end of December, early January next year. So uh, that, that's the plan as it is at the moment. Awesome. So we'll put a link below in the description for that uh, program for sure. I think you're good at what you do for sure. And people that want to be able to master more the, the psychological mindset side of trading and, and physiology as well are going to be able to learn a lot from you for sure. So that's awesome. Yeah, and it'll be, um, we're going to launch it under the website. The web address will be um, www. and it'll be tradeatyourbest.com. So if people are looking for it, that, that's where they'll find it. So the website's not up yet, but it'll be up pretty soon. So Excellent. So Steve, is there one last advice you'd like to leave people with? Any last thought or something you want people to kind of maybe work on in the next few months? I would say for me, and it's been a theme of our conversation, I'm going to come back down to the goal. I think if people can really focus on that, the goal of trading is to get better at trading and to make it a learning focused mastery activity. I think for a lot of people that can really make a big difference to the experience they have in the market. So it's all about developing your competence on the path from beginner through to kind of expert, keep evolving, looking to get better. You've got to work on the craft, the skills, the knowledge, the strategy. You've got to work on your mindset. You've got to be mindful of also what's going on in the body as well. And, and just, you know, keep doing to get better at making decisions under conditions of uncertainty. If you, if you keep that as a core focus, that's going to be pretty helpful for people. Excellent, Steve. It was a really good interview and I really appreciate the advice you gave people, myself and the listeners as well. And I hope to catch up with you soon. You're welcome and thanks for inviting me back. Appreciate it, Etienne.